Will you come to prayer with me this morning? Gracious God, as we give thanks for your continued grace and your love that you provide for us this day, as we continue to follow your way and allow us to follow the plan for us to move forward in our lives, I let those prayers come to us that we open our hearts this morning and open our souls as we hear your words, your words of wisdom and grace and love and the gifts that you give amongst those. I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this morning, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, let them ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So over these last three or so weeks, we have been engaged in this series, for those who haven't been with us, called The Bible Doesn't Say That. And we've been discussing those terms or phrases that people explain, well, that's what the Bible says. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, everything happens for a reason. And I'm sure that you've heard this phrase before and that maybe you've even used that phrase a time or two in your lives. Well, in all honesty, that phrase is really not a religious or spiritual phrase, as you have it. <laughs> but there are spiritual cousins to this phrase like, God has a reason, or it's God's will. And I'm sure you know all the scenarios when it comes up to those things like that, like in a time of disaster or tragedy or loss, and usually when we don't know what to say. So we usually say, well, everything <coughs> happens for a reason. You know, when a child gets a cancerous diagnosis or someone loses their job or out of the blue your best friend unfriends you for no reason at all on Facebook and maybe there's a natural disaster that's happened or again not knowing what to say and you know it's not uncommon for us to say well everything happens for a reason I mean come now what does that really mean are you talking about that everything has a cause or everything happens for a reason because somebody caused it? Or are you saying everything has a purpose or an outcome? So everything happens for a reason or both? And again, it's not uncommon for something like that to be said, probably out of a deep sense of caring or compassion or sincerity and love. And, you know, we're just at that loss for the words for that explanation. Unfortunately, it's also not uncommon for something like this to be said, out of place or out of that incomplacency or that lack of desire for that hard work, whether it is an intellectual or a theological thought, we just sometimes don't know what to say. And what we do is we go to our standby phrase. Oh well, I guess God had a reason. Or, I guess it's God's reason. <coughs> or, everything happens for a reason. Let's take, for example, all the horrific fires this past year in California where so much was lost due to these fires. Acres and acres of land were destroyed and the multitude of God's creations that were lost, which in turn caused massive mudslides when it got hit by the storms, washing much of the land down into the ocean or the banks if you lived on the California coast, or in, in the, up in the hills where it created major mudslides where roads were destroyed and closed. Or even that account that when we dealt with last year with Puerto Rico having those massive hurricanes. Both events were where people have made statements that Probably it was the divine punishment of God. I heard that a lot during those causes and giving the reason that they needed to be, maybe they needed to be <coughs> cleansed or self-centered because of their egotism and all that, that they were being punished because of that. Well, I'm not sure about you, but it makes me think of some of these tele-evangelists in the United States who make the claim that God always has a way of punishing us for certain things in our lives. But it also breaks my heart that when I hear people who are Christians make comments like this in the times of <coughs> tragedy and loss, 
and just ask him and say, oh well, God had a reason for that, or everything happens for a reason. Now, I'm grateful for those of us sitting here in this room, and I'm hoping that none of us blame any of these natural disasters on God. It's part of life. It's part of what we deal with day into day. It's the natural resources that come to us. So if our faith doesn't teach us that everything happens for a reason, then what does it teach us? I think one of the places that we can go to look is back in Romans. I mean, we heard from Mark this morning, but Paul makes this bold claim in that to God and Jesus that has done the most impossible, that has made a way for the world to come alive with this peace and this hope. And Paul goes on to say that we're living in this birth of pains and this anticipation of completion for all the impossibilities to become realities. So I'm going to bounce over to Romans for a second and share with you what Paul says. And Paul says, if you want to dig for it later, it's in chapter 8. And Paul says that you know, we were saved in hope if we, were to, if we see that we hope for, that it isn't hope who hopes for what they already see. But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience in the same way. The Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit leads us to case with unexpressed groans, and the one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks, because God pleads to the saints for that consistency with God's will, and we will know that God's work of all things together are for the good ones and for the ones who love God and for the ones who are called according to God's purpose. And I paraphrase that just a little bit so if you want to go back and read the exact words I strongly suggest doing that but um, it's Romans 8 and it's the end of Romans it's 24 through 28 if you want to go back and, and check my, check my uh, Bible theology but um, I think Paul gave a much better answer than Everything just happens for a reason. At times we don't know what to say, and at times of that disaster and tragedy or grief or despair, all because Paul says that we're saved, that we're redeemed, and that we're restored, and that we are set free in hope. And I want to tell you that sometimes I feel that hope is out there in short supply, or, at least in my opinion, we don't get much airtime with hope sometimes in the world. And along with that hope, I put out there that, that divine inspiration and that imagination that makes hope possible. You know, we talk about Christian hope. And we're not talking about crossing your fingers or crossing your toes. That's not Christian hope, or even throwing the coin over your shoulder into the fountain. <laughs> but Christian hope is about an active and anticipation of the salvation of where our lives will be and to be set right in our ways. And at the, the times, you know, Paul acknowledges that we live and that we're set free by this hope and that Paul even acknowledges, which, you know, it's rare to see that we talk about the negative, but Paul talks that we even acknowledge our weaknesses. Now, I think we can say that sometimes we all struggle with things in our lives and we struggle to understand sometimes what to say when we don't have all the answers. And through all this, this is where we are tempted to fall back that, oh well, everything happens for a reason. How many times have you heard that in your life? You know, along with the, oh, it's God's will. Oh, well, I guess that's just the way it's going to be. But Paul tells us in those times and in those moments that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, prays with us and prays for us. Now, the Bible calls our Spirit our Counselor and our Comforter. Calls us to be that guide. You know, the Holy Spirit of God lifts us up even in those unspeakable times of prayer that we come from that deep depth below in those times that we don't know what to say. However, the best part of all this is that Paul writes that the best part of this whole scenario is the good news. 
He says that for anyone and everyone and those who have some sense or any sense at all or the love of God and the love for God that has any inclination for that life of the life that God gives. And for any and everyone then we will see that God works in the midst of everything. All things and all through all things that brings us to that good brings us to that holy and for all of that brings us to where we are in the world God is with us folks just like we hear in the 23rd Psalm and we're kind of bouncing around the Bible a little bit today but you know it says as I walk through the valley of the death I fear no evil because your rod and your staff they comfort me and that we can live as people of hope. So I just want to say that if we're along some side somewhere or we're going through that midst of tragedy or struggle in our lives or loss, we simply just don't say, oh well, everything happens for a reason. But what we should say is that God is with you in this and so am I. That the Bible does say. That God is in this and God is with you and so am I. And you know, one of today's modern theologians, his name is N.T. Wright, wrote a book called Surprised by Hope. And he talks about being able to just say that. You know, as followers of Jesus, that God is in you with this and so am I. He says in his book that people who believe in the resurrection and God making a whole new world in which everything that will be set right at last or that unstoppably motivated to be that work in the new world do it right here in the presence. So it's not so then it's not sufficient to say that everything happens or reason but rather say God is with you and so am I. That would be the operable phrase. The Bible does tell us that. Part of this challenge and struggle that we go through is that we look for a purpose sometimes. We look for an explanation or we look for a reason, sometimes even blame or cause. But that's not the purpose that God has for us. Or it's not even God's will and it's not even God's reason that we would go through any particular event or circumstance because it's not God's reason or will, but it would rather be that God would want us to go through that through love and loving each other. You know, over the last several weeks, you know, we talked about all these different phrases that people claim to be the biblical word in the Bible. And we learned that it was quite the opposite through that. And God has a loving intent and purpose for each of us. You know, this past weekend, or actually right now, over this weekend, our sisters and brothers in the United Methodist Church are engaged in their annual conference in St. Louis, Missouri. And it's a very crucial time for them because they are one of the last mainstream denominations who are having struggles with the open and affirming conversation and allowing even to have same-sex marriages in their churches and even affirming or confirming their clergy to serve in the pulpits who identify as LGBT. It's been a very dreary time. I have several colleagues in this area who are going through that struggle and all dependent on where they end up, they may not be in a pulpit because of the United Methodist Ways. And I think everyone saw that we sent out a uh, email this past weekend or yesterday you know, asking for prayer for them and we continue to ask prayer for them you know, it is that we are with them that we stand by them that's the prime example that the Bible is saying that it doesn't happen for a reason but the Bible is telling us that we are all God's children and that we are created equally in that exact image of God it's going to be very interesting to see where that outcome is through the end of this conference with them and um, I haven't really heard anything. It's been kind of been, I, I joke around, one of those best kept secrets over the last of the course of a couple of days. I've seen a few snippets here and there of what has been going on in their conference but 
there has been no specific conversation. So it'll be very interesting to see what direction that happens, but knowing that we, even as people in this congregation, support our sisters and brothers through that effort, you know, we all are seated at that same table with God, and not because everything happens for a reason, but because that we were created in that same image of God, and that God has promised us to be always right there by our sides, letting us know that God is always with us. You know, shortly we'll be at the table for communion this morning. And I want to tell you something that, especially for each of us present today, that that consideration of that we've been saying everything happens for a reason. Well, know that the good news is that the main point here is that God is with you all the time, and so are we. You know, that communion meal celebrates the gift. And we celebrate it in week as because it embodies all of this that we're talking about. Because of what God is saying, that God is in this with us. That God came to us by stepping out of that eternal and everlasting and stepped foot into the world, pretty much to say, I'm with you all the way. So in those moments of brokenness and grief and loss and when we're at those loss for words and we don't know what to say or to do and we're in one of those deepest and darkest places that we take those gifts. You know, God went there in Jesus all the way to the death at the cross. You know, as we lead to those same events that as we're invited to the meal this morning you know, we are told that we share this meal together. That every time we do so, we do so to remember and to be reminded that God is right <coughs> there with us. So I want us to take that moment to remember and to be reminded that it is really the time of being together when we share that meal each and every Sunday. And we don't go through life of struggles or pain alone. And that we need to be reminded that God is with us and that we do all of this together. That we know that this morning when we take communion that it's part of a sacred act that we have in this congregation and when we come to the table that we are receiving that bread and that cup that we are looking for Jesus and we are looking for God. I don't know about you but nowhere in the Bible that I read does it say everything happens for a reason. But my Bible says and always will be that God is with us or God is with you and that we do that and we say that and that we are in that part of it each and every moment of our lives. So the next time you think about what can I say or I don't know what to say, I hope it's not, oh well, everything happens for a reason, <laughs> but that God is with you and so am I. And that we do that upon the gifts that we give that we're there for people. That we bring that spirit of God, like we said last week, as we go out into the community, bringing that word of happiness of who we are as Christians into the world. So I bring you blessings this day and each and every day as we go. And remember, everything doesn't happen for a reason. Amen. Amen. Amen.